you can start and pray. And just, you can go ahead and share if you have a PowerPoint or if you just want to share from the heart. We're just happy to hear all that you have. So welcome, sir. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, um, it's just a, such a blessing for me to be here today and a miracle. Uh, I'm with my wife here, uh, Patricia, and we have been praying. We have been praying and, and the Lord has just given us this breakthrough. And um, so I am so excited. I am so happy. And I'm looking forward to this blessed time. Before I can, I can continue, uh, I just want to introduce myself officially. I am Abel Vusmuzi Zuma and married to Patricia Zuma for the past 28 years. The Lord has blessed us with three children. Their names is Blessing, Honor, and Praise. And by God's grace, we have adopted two children, which is Ria Leboha and Sehofato. And I have been in the ministry for the past 23 years by his grace. And just before I get into my presentation, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, Dr. George, and to thank you, Dr. Nancy Daniels, for three things. Thank you for your patience. You've been so much patient with us, especially with me. Thank you for your encouragement. You've been such a great encouragement to me personally. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your commitment in loving and working with different nations all over the globe. And I, I, I'm, I'm so thankful to the Lord that he connected me miraculously with you and, and to this day. And just to say some few words is that there were times, you know, where I felt that enough is enough. I just want to let go. But you kept on encouraging me. You kept on being there. And I'm so thankful, Dr. Nancy, I'm so thankful, Dr. George, and, and I just give God all the praise and glory for your lives. So the theme that I'll be speaking about tonight is prayer and intercession. And I say prayer and intercession is the greatest tool given to humankind by God. I just want to repeat it again. Prayer and intercession is the greatest tool given to humankind by God. And I just want to start by the background plus African culture. You know, the background of, of prayer plus African culture. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm born from a clan of Zulu. It's a Zulu nation. And it's a very staunch ancestral worshippers. It's a very strong believing people who believe in ancestors. And, and according to this clan is that we have to pray to the ancestors. And one of the myth or something that is wrong that they believe is that when someone or my father or my mother dies, 
he becomes an angel that will take prayers to God. He becomes an angel that will take my prayers. I, I don't have to pray to God. I have to pray to them and they can take my prayers to the Lord. And as a child, I was, I was raised from a strict, uncompromising ancestral belief. And, and, and this tribe, it is so staunch, it is so much deeply rooted in ancestral worship. And they call that prayer and intercession. I've read a book of one of the African writers. It's Profeta, Prophet, uh, Professor Matole Mutsecha. This professor is married to the Minister of Education. And there's a book that he has written. It says, the African Renaissance and Theosophical Movement. It's a book that encourages people to pray to the ancestors. It is the book that calls Africans to pray and to bow down to this foreign God that is called ancestors. And, and, and remember, I said he's a professor, but this man is married to a minister of education in our country. And whatever that is spoken into that family, it affects the whole country. Because whatever it has been spoken there, it is going now to our schools because the, the husband is, is a non-believer. The husband, it's an ancestral worshiper. The husband is the influencer of the whole nation for them to pray ancestors. And now when they speak in the house, this woman as a minister of, of our education, he impacts and, and, and she impacts and she implements whatever they are speaking in their house into our schools. And unfortunately, our schools as we speak now, God has been taken away from our schools. And ancestral worship has been promoted into our schools. Prayer has been taken away in our schools. And now what is happening? It's ancestral worship that is happening into our schools. And that is affecting the next generation in a very, very negative way. So this is prayer according to African belief. This worship of ancestors, it's prayer. And they call it again, intercessors. They call themselves intercessors. And, and this thing, now it has touched our nation because it is wrongly uh, a practiced. Remember, you know, this, what the revolution that happened to me concerning prayer and intercession, happened at school. I was raised from this family that is staunch ancestral worshipers. I did not know anything about praying to this great God. But when I came or when I went to school, I began to hear now about this great God. I began to hear about the power from on, from on high. I began now to believe that God, there's a God, there's a, there's, a, there's a power that is above all powers, other than the one that I knew of, other than the one that I was told about. And I began to realize from school that really there's a God who is above 
ancestors. There's a God who is above worshipping of these ancestors. Because we are raised in this family. Every month, there will be slaughtering of goat. There will be blood shedding. And, and, and with this, it will be rituals that will be done to ancestors. We will be praying to ancestors. When there is funeral, every time before anything, they will call ancestors. They will do rituals. This is, this is the foundation that I was given into. This is the foundation that I was born into. This is the foundation that I was brought up from. And by God's grace, it is at school where I got this revelation about the great God. The great God of Israel, the great God who created the heavens and the earth, the great God who is above anyone and any situation. Now, as a child, I was very much confused because when I can choose to go with this God, I will be abandoned as a, from the family. I will be chased away. I will be rejected. But I had to take a standpoint and accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, there were times when these monthly and, and quarterly rituals will be done and I will reject them and I will be rejected by the family for not doing what they wanted me to do. And they will tell me that I'm still a child. I need to honor my parents. I need to do what is right. But telling the honest truth, I could sense in my spirit that something is wrong here. And I have to take a decision. I have to worship this God. I have to pray the ultimate God. Yes, rejection came. But I took up a stand and I said, I, whether a, a rejection or what, I'm taking a stand. I am going to worship this ultimate God. His name is Jesus Christ. Really, rejection came from the family. But I continued. I, I, I lost a lot of things because of this rejection, but I continued. And God has been so, so good to me because I took a stand. From the family itself, I took a stand. And as I can speak to you today, as I'm speaking today, my entire family got to know Jesus through the stubborn faith that I had in the Lord. They saw the difference. They saw that there is this God that we did not believe in. There is this God that we did not love. There is this God that this young boy came with, and this is a real God. As I'm speaking today, they have accepted, the entire family, they have accepted Jesus as my Lord and their, as my Lord and their, and their Lord. And today, the entire family, they call upon the name of Jesus. The entire family, we even have a, a clan where we come together and we pray and we trust in the Lord. But when I remember where I come from, I had to have a step on faith for them to see that there is something that is happening in these people. There is something that these people are believing in. This God is a real God. What encourages me on the literature re uh, uh, review, I read about a man a book called Answer to Prayer. And the second book of George Miller, 
that I read, it says release the power of prayer. You know, when I read about John, George Miller, I saw something that revolutionized my life. It was in the 1839 when God called George Miller. And the Lord told George Miller to start or to build orphanages in Europe. And George Miller trusted in the Lord with all of his heart. He trusted in, his Lord, in the Lord for provision. He never, he never in his book, he never even asked for anything from anyone. He prayed and he interceded. In the entire Europe, there are orphanages that are full around Europe, built by this man through prayer and intercession. George Miller has inspired my life so much. And there's this verse that really turned my life upside down. It's, we find it in, in the book of Isaiah 65. In the book of Isaiah 65, I will just read it because this has touched me so much. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. It says, The Lord said, I was ready to answer my people's prayers, but they did not pray. I was ready for them to find me. But they did not even try. The nation did not pray to me. Even though I was always ready to answer. This is the Lord speaking. And, and through prayer and intercession, when I read this verse, and this verse was given to me while I was sleeping, the Lord said, I was ready to answer my people's prayer. But they did not pray. God is expecting us to pray. God is expecting us to trust him and to pray and to call upon his name. And as we call upon his name, he answers our prayers. He says, I was ready for them to find me. But they did not even try. <laughs> wow. I said, Lord, in Isaiah 65, as you have spoken to me, I'm going to pray. I'm going to intercede. I have read about George Miller. I want to see what you have done through George Miller. Yes, I have heard about the professor who, who is encouraging African people to pray ancestors. But I want to pray you, Lord. I want to trust you, Lord. And I can tell you now, I have seen miracles after miracles after miracles. I read the second book of the man called Reynard Bonke. And Bonke was an evangelist that was called by the Lord to Africa. And Ronald Bonke came to Africa and he trusted the Lord. He said he had a dream where Africa was covered with the blood of Jesus. And when he came to Africa, he trusted in the Lord. This man prayed. This man trusted in the Lord. There's a book that I read. It says, the, the, the name of the book is Taking Action. God called him into Africa. He did not have anything, but he took an action. He prayed. He trusted in the Lord. This man came to Africa. 
and millions upon millions of souls came to the Lord through Reynald Bonke. God changed Africa. God transformed Africa through prayer and intercession. There's a man, I read his book again. It's Angus Bakker. The book that I read of Angus Bakker, it's faith like potato. You know, this man trusted in the Lord. He prayed so much. And as we speak now, he is in touch, is touching the entire globe because of prayer and intercession. When we pray to God, just like Isaiah 65 says, I was ready to answer my people's prayers. But they did not pray. God is looking for people who will pray. And I tell you now, when we pray, continents can change. Countries can change. People's lives can be transformed because of prayer and intercession. So this man, Angus Parkham, he wrote another book, which was very much, I like it, I, I read it again, this book. It says 21 days on, on the power of prayer. 21 days on the power of prayer. Angus Buckham, I remember there was a, a big crusade that was in his farm, and I attended that crusade, and it was men, he was calling men into that. We had around half a million men who gathered in that farm. And one of the main things that was done in those three days, it was prayer and intercession. So I have seen that through prayer and intercession, God can change the world. God can transform the world. When you go to the book of Chronicles, in the book of Chronicles, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray, God says, I will heal their land. I will heal them and I will heal their land. So the Lord expects us to pray. The Lord expects us to trust in him. And the Lord expects us, and when we trust in him, when we come to him through prayer, he can change any situation. I've given a testimony about my friend who, are, who is a South African and they went to live in Sweden. And when they, are, they were in Sweden, because this man got a job in Sweden. And after a year, this man got sick. And, and the wife, Charlotte, phoned me and said, Pastor, please, my husband, has been diagnosed with cancer. And they say this cancer is at stage four. Something must change here. And I said, Charlotte, we're going to trust God. We're going to pray. And we prayed. We prayed. We trusted the Lord. Because according to Isaiah 65, he says, I wanted to answer your prayers, but you did not pray. And the Lord answered a prayer. And two weeks ago, this friend of mine, they were in South Africa, coming to give glory to the Lord, not to me, but to the Lord. And they said, "Free, he is 100% healed from cancer. It is through prayer. He is 100% healed from cancer. It is through prayer and intercession. The Lord spoke to me 
about our youth that were getting into drugs, that were getting into alcohol. And the Lord said, I need to come up with a solution for this young man. I did not know what to do. And I organized a prayer at the church. And I said, the Lord has spoken to me. Let us pray. And we started to intercede. We started to pray. We started to trust, trust in the Lord. We seek a direction from the Lord. And the Lord said, start a cycling club. A cycling club. And I said, Lord, how, how am I going to start a cycling club? How am I going to do it? How am I going? To do it, Lord. And the Lord said to me, he gave me a, a word from Isaiah 55. From verse number one. The Lord says, Come everyone who is thirsty. Here is water. Come you who have no money. Buy corn and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. It will cost you nothing. Personally, if I give this testimony about the cycling club, I did not even have a bike myself. But the Lord says, start a cycling club. And I prayed and I trusted in the Lord. As I'm speaking today, we have over 100 bicycles that the Lord provided. And, 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 and this cycling club is growing vigorously because God provided through prayer. So I am encouraging people. I am encouraging myself and everyone that when we pray, God answers prayers. When we intercede, God comes through for us. When we pray, God changes our situations. When we pray, God transforms our lives. God transforms our lives. God just connected me just connected me to people. He just connected me to, to, to people and God provided. What we did, we just prayed. According to Isaiah 65, I just prayed and God answered prayers. You know, I, I, I believe with all of my heart that for me to be in this class, it is because of prayer. It is only through prayer. Because th there was no way that the Lord can do it, but he did it through prayer. And here I am and I today, giving a presentation that God, when we pray, when we intercede, he can change our country. He can change the globe. He can change South Africa. He can change Myanmar. He can change any situation. We only have to trust him. We have only have to pray and to trust in him. So prayer, it is the greatest tool that the Lord has given humankind. Now, when I go to the giants of faith, the giants of faith, when we read in the book of Acts chapter number 12, the giants of faith, I, I have spoken about the professor who have influenced people in a negative way. I've given 
a literature review and I, I've, I've gone even to George Miller, those guys that lived in this world, the, 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 those who touch different lives. And today I want to go to the guys who have touched my life so much in the Bible. You know, in the book of Acts chapter number 12, those were the times when King Herod was in charge. And the Bible says he had James, the brother of John, to be put to death by salt. And when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he went on to arrest Peter. And he wanted to kill Peter also. But I love from verse number six. I'm talking about prayer and intercession. In verse number six, it says, the night before Herod was going to bring him out to the people, Peter was sleeping between the two guards. He was tied with two chains and there were guards on duty at the prison gate. He was in jail. But when we read very well, it says, and the church was praying. The church was praying. And God sent an angel because the church was praying. You know, when we pray, situation changes. When we pray, the power of God the power of the Holy Spirit is manifested. Peter was about to be killed like James, but the church prayed the whole night. The church interceded for Peter. And when the church interceded for Peter, heaven released an angel to go to jail and to release Peter from jail. Because of prayer. And the Bible says, after Peter has been released, he went where the Christians were praying, where the church was praying. And as he knocked on the door, a young lady went to the door and he says, who are you? He says, it's Peter. And instead of opening, she ran inside the house. And said, Peter is at the door. I said, no, 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 that is a ghost. It's not Peter. They were praying. And God answered a prayer immediately. And God released Peter immediately. This is a God that we prayed unto. And when we pray upon this God, he answers immediately. He changes people's lives immediately. God transforms lives immediately and Peter was released from jail because of prayer Amen. Amen. I believe even the lives of those believers were drastically changed after they saw Peter it was through prayer Prayer is like a tsunami. Prayer is a powerful force. Prayer is a tool that our heavenly father has given us to conquer this world, to change this world, to transform this world, to change the next generation. When people say this generation has gone too far, through prayer, things can come right. So prayer is a powerful tool that God has given us. Bible says about Peter, Paul, and Silas. The Bible says for preaching the gospel, they were, they were taken into jail. 
And the Bible says in the middle of the night, they worshiped and they prayed. And the Bible says the jail was shaken to its foundation because they prayed and they worshiped God. So through prayer, powerful things can happen. Through prayer, lives can be transformed. Lives can be changed. Through prayer, we can see so many things happening. So many things happening because of prayer. So prayer is powerful. Prayer is, is it, this is a tool that the Lord has given. I have seen it in my life. Yeah. It's my personal testimony. I have seen it in my life. When we trust in the Lord, when we pray, things happen. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from, from, from a side where poverty, and, and I call it because I hate it so much, poverty, I, I hate it so much because it's demonic. Poverty is not from the Lord. Poverty is from the pit of hell. Now, 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 when you are from that perspective, you know how evil is the enemy. And, and you cannot sleep. You will pray and you'll pray and you'll see things changing. During the time of COVID, you know, when people were dying left, the right, center. When people were dying left, the right, center. And we prayed as a church and we said, Lord, here is COVID. What is it that you have for us? And the Lord gave us a word in the book of Psalms 118, verse 17. I want to read it. Psalm 118, verse 17. It says, remember, this thing happens in the midst of death, in the midst of COVID-19, when people were dying so much. And as we prayed as a church, the Lord gave us this weight. Psalm 118, verse 17. It says, I will not die. Instead, I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. Before the Lord, I can give a testimony because we stood in this way and prayed and trusted the Lord. Since COVID, I have never even buried one person. Not even one. I'm talking about people that I know personally who have lung, severe lung problems in the church. I'm talking about grannies, 100 years, 90 years. Those are, are people who, who have a lot of sicknesses. But when we stood and prayed through the word of God that he has given us, to this day, as I'm standing before you, Dr. George and Dr. Nance, as I'm standing before you, we have never buried even one through prayer and intercession. Amen. So prayer is a powerful force. Prayer can let somebody who is busy dying live again. Prayer can resurrect people. Prayer can transform our nation. Prayer can transform the world and the globe. Because prayer is a powerful tool. So we need to trust in the Lord. 
And as you pray, and as you trust in the Lord, God, the Lord will do it again. Because of prayer. Angus Beckham, as I told you about the book that I've, re I've read of Angus Beckham, Faith Like Potato. This man is an old man, but is a man of prayer. This man, when the Lord speaks to him to go and have a men's conference, he will pray. He will trust in the Lord. And the Lord will provide every cent for that crusade or for that men's conference. I have learned so much from this old man, Angus Bakker. He's a South African. He's a farmer. I remember he gave, even in this book, he gave a testimony that there was a time of drought. And, and, and the, as, as there was this drought and, and everybody was, was, was in a panic mode, all the farmers around him, they were in a panic mode and they did not know. And these were times where they have to get the harvest. They planted, they are looking for harvest, but there was this time and that time was 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 a, a time of 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 drought, and Angus Buckham prayed. In South Africa, we call this man a man of rain. He prayed, and God poured the rain because somebody prayed. An ordinary man like Angus Beckham, he prayed. There's, there's a time in his book where he, he, he gave a testimony that in Cape Town, in South Africa, in Cape Town, there was a time where there was no water. And they have came to a place where they say it, there's a zero uh, 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 time where there will be no water at all because there was no rain at all. He went to Cape Town. He prayed to the Lord. He humbled himself before the mighty God. And the Lord poured the rain in Cape Town. And I can go on and on and on. When we pray, God changes situation. God can bring the rain when we pray. God can heal our land when we pray. God can transform the next generation when we pray. God can turn around the wickedness that is happening in our schools, in our country, in these uh, time, times where people are, are, are worshiping ancestors. When we pray and intercede, God is able to change the situation. Right now, as I speak, we have a very serious, serious, serious uh, situation in our country that has to do with load shedding. We have what we call electricity crisis. You know, we have engineers, they have tried everything. We have politicians, they have tried everything, but nothing is working. And we have called prayer. We have called prayer. We said, Lord, now the engineers cannot do it. The president cannot do it. The politicians cannot do it. The, those that we trust, they cannot do it. And we came and went to the Lord. And I can testify that since we have started to pray concerning this electricity crisis, Things are turning around. Things are changing. God has intervened 
God has started to change the situation because of prayer. So prayer is the most powerful tool that the Lord has given us. Prayer is the most powerful tool that we have on our hands that we can use. The Lord gave me this word, Psalm 50. The Psalm 50, 5 0, verse 15. The Lord says, I'm speaking about prayer and intercession. He says, call on me. Call to me when trouble comes. I will save you. And you will praise me. And when the Lord says, call on me, he says, pray to me. He says, intercede to me. Call on me when trouble comes. We look around the world. It's only devastation. It's only trouble. And the solution is prayer. Because the Lord called to me when trouble comes. When the economy is shaking, he says, call to me when trouble comes. When the war is raging the world, he says, call to me when trouble comes. He says, I will save you. And you will praise me. God wants us to call upon him. He wants us to pray. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to bring everything to him. He says, bring your burdens unto me, for I care for you. In the book of Peter, he says, bring all your burdens. Pray unto him. Bring them to me. Intercede. Call upon my name. Then, me as God, I care for you and I will change your situation. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is powerful. The Lord wants to show his power in the entire world. But he want us to call upon his name. And when you call upon his name, he acts. He shows up. He changes things. He transforms people's lives. God want to answer our prayers. He just us, want us to pray. Only. He want us to pray. And one of the things that the Lord has revealed to me, he wants us to pray his way. Wow. Wow. He wants us to pray his way. And when we pray his way, you remind him of his way. That's why in the book of Isaiah it says, by his stripes, we were healed. So when I pray for anybody who is sick, I come to him through his way. That Lord, you said, by your stripes, we are healed. And every time, when I remind him of his way, he heals people miraculously. So what a great God that we serve. I look at the life of Paul. As I've already alluded, when they prayed, the jail or the prison was shaken to its foundation when they prayed. They did not do anything wrong. They were, they, they were preaching the gospel and they were taken into custody because of preaching the gospel, they never complained to God. They never. 
when they, they were faced with tribulation, they never complained. They praised and they worshiped the Lord. And they prayed. And God came through for them. So this is my take. I believe prayer, it is the cornerstone that can change things today. Prayer, it is the, the weapon that the Lord has given that can change things today. Yes, I believe and I see with my eyes that the world is in chaos. I see that the economies are in chaos. But it is only prayer that can turn things around. It is only prayer that can heal people. It is only prayer that can transform things. One day, this lady, his cousin, got into an accident. And, and this guy, when, when the accident occurred, it was so bad that he had to be airlifted by an helicopter because this guy was about to die. And when he was in the ICU, this lady, He's in our church and he called me, said, Pastor, please, can you come and pray for my cousin? At least before he dies, pray for him. And in the ICU, you are not allowed to, to go to two. You have to go on your own. And I prayed, I said, Lord, because I don't know this guy, this lady is the one. I pray that when you arrive there, at the hospital in an ICU that they will open for both of us. And as we came to the door, I've already prayed, they, they opened for both of us. And the family, a day before, they've been called and they've been told that the doctors can do nothing about the situation. And as we entered the ICU and we started, I started to pray. I said, Lord, if this man has to die, let him die. But if he has to come back to life, I pray for a miracle right now that this man will come back to life. You know, as I was praying, this man lifted up his hand. And, and instead, this lady that I was with, she began to cry because she sees a day before they have been called that this man is about to die. Come and, and, and say goodbye to him. But the following day, we went in the, in the ICU, prayed a prayer, and this man lifted up his hand. And to the, until today, this man is still alive. He is still alive. He is serving Jesus. He is worshiping the almighty God. I say through prayer, we will see miracles. Through prayer, we will see signs and wonders. Through prayer, we will see God's provision. Through prayer, we will see the power of the Holy Spirit manifested. Through prayer, we will see his goodness in the land of the living. As I'm coming to the U.S., it has happened miraculously. I did not have a visa. I did not have money for ticket. I did not have anything. And the Lord says, call upon me. And I call upon his name. And as I'm speaking to you, I have the visa. The ticket is ready. 
the hotel has been paid. So we, we serve a God who says, call upon me and I will show myself powerful. So this is the God that when you call him, he comes through for you. This is a God when you call him, he can heal your family, he can heal your children. This is a God when somebody has been, has been abandoned, they say they don't even know, the family don't even know where he is. When we pray, God touch him wherever he is. And they come back. Prayer is doing so powerful things. There's a lady that came, and this lady had a misunderstanding with the husband. And the husband prepared everything for the children. They had three kids. And the husband took the children. He went overseas. This woman did not know where her children were. When I met this woman, it was already the year number five where she did not have any contact with her children and the husband. And when we met, she explained what has happened. They had some misunderstanding. She never thought this, this husband will go with the children. And I said, mommy, let us pray. We don't know where your husband is together with your children, but God knows exactly where they are. I'm speaking about prayer and intercession. And we prayed that night. I remember very, very well. It was on a Friday. When we prayed and called the name of the husband and called the name of the three kids. The next week, when we prayed, it was Friday. The following week on Monday, the husband called. And the husband said, I bought a ticket for you. I want you to come and see the kids. And she phoned me, said, my husband has called. I am going overseas to see my kids. And I said, what is it that you want from the Lord? She said, I want to reconcile with my husband and my children. And I said, let us pray. And we prayed. And as I'm speaking to you now, she is raising her kids together with the husband. They are together again because prayer is a powerful tool that the Lord has given us. Wow. So I'm so blessed and I'm so happy that the Lord revealed this miracle of prayer. And prayer changes and transforms things. I have a dream that the Lord is going to do more through prayer. I have a dream that the world, even if it, it's in such a turmoil, but the Lord can change things through prayer. The Lord has given us prayer as a tool that whatever he wants to do in this world, he wait for us to pray. He wants to do so much, but he's waiting for us to pray. And when we pray, the Lord acts. When we pray, the Lord transforms. When we pray, the Lord changes things. When we pray, 
even things that we never thought they would happen, but through prayer and intercession, powerful things are happening. So prayer is a tool that the Lord has given us. I've seen it through the, the men who have written books. I've seen it through in the Bible that prayer changes situation. I've seen it in my own life that prayer has changed my life. I've seen it in my own family that prayer has changed my family. I've seen it in my community that prayer can change my community. I've seen it even with the next generation when the Lord started this biking club. The Lord is changing the next generation through prayer. So I am so excited to speak about prayer and intercession. I've seen it working and I continue to see it working. I continue, when, 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 when I pray, I continue to see God changes things. There's a time when, the, when, when there was a lot, lot. I mean, in Africa, I, I, I'll speak for Africa. There's a lot of witchcraft happening. Lot. Lot of witchcraft. And, and witchcraft is, is something that we have opened the door for witchcraft. And witchcraft was happening inside the church. And the Lord revealed that there is a, a clan, there is people that are doing witchcraft within the church. And the Lord said to us, take a 21 day fast. And we prayed for 21 days. I remember the last day was on a Sunday. And the Lord exposed witchcraft. And the Lord revealed. And the Lord changed the church to be fire revival. Because when the Lord moves with the fire of the Holy Spirit, anything that is of the kingdom of darkness must die, must leave, must give away. And that happened through prayer. So I am I'm here to encourage the soldiers in the kingdom of God that let us not get weary of prayer. Let us continue and pray. Let us, let us intensify prayer. When the enemy will come like a flood, the Holy Spirit will raise the standard. So we need to raise the standard of prayer. We need to raise the standard of prayer. We need to raise the standard of prayer. And when we raise the standard of prayer, God penetrates and God is able to change situations. So prayer, it's a powerful tool that the Lord has given us. When we go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one, I see God changing the life of this man called Jeremiah. He says, I knew you, Jeremiah, I knew you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I separated you. I put you aside as a prophet among the nations. Jeremiah was very much afraid. He did not know that the Lord can do so much about his life. But God is God. I want to read it. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1, I'm speaking about the giants of faith, people who prayed unto the Lord. The Lord said to me, verse number 4, I chose you 
before I gave you life. And before you were born, I selected you to be a prophet to the nations. I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. He's giving us chooses now. But the Lord said to me, do not say you are too young, but go to the people I send you to. Tell them everything I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them, for I will be with you to protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. So just imagine, Jeremiah saw himself as a nobody. But God can turn a nobody to somebody. God can turn nothing to something. God can turn something that people say, this cannot work. God can turn it and it can work. These are the giants of faith. Because God, before God will call you, before God will give you an assignment, he will call you and he will give you all the resources to be able to accomplish what he has called you for. So prayer is a powerful tool. I want to go to the last giant of faith in the book of Samuel. In the book of Samuel, In the book of Samuel, chapter number two, remember there's this woman called Hannah. And the Bible sp speaks about Hannah's prayer. And in the book of, 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 of First Samuel, chapter two, it says, Hannah prayed, the Lord has filled my heart with joy. How happy I am because of what he has done. Remember, Hannah had no children. And Hannah went into the house of the Lord. And he called, he, 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 when Eli said, Hannah, are you drunk? He said, no, no, I'm not drunk. But I'm pouring my heart to the Lord. He prayed earnestly. He prayed so much. And the Lord answered Hannah's prayer. And Hannah conceived and he gave birth to prophet Samuel. One of the greatest Samuel, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. That happened because of prayer. That happened because of prayer. Remember, Elkanah had, had two wives. And this other wife had many children, but Hannah had nothing. And Hannah turned to God. And Hannah prayed. And the Lord opened her womb. And Hannah was able to give birth to Samuel. And remember Samuel, God used him so much. Even in the times of David, God used Samuel so much. Samuel came because of prayer. I can imagine, sometimes I ask myself, if Hannah did not pray, what would have happened? He would have been frustrated. He would have, she would have been uh, uh, discouraged. But instead of being discouraged, instead of being uh, uh, thrown down by, by the challenges of life, she said, I'm going to pray. And she prayed and the Lord turned Hannah's situation 
And Hannah became pregnant because of prayer. And Hannah gave birth to Samuel, one of the greatest prophets, because of prayer. So I'm here to say that prayer is the powerful weapon that the Lord has given us. So let us pray and trust in him. Let us pray, let us intercede and trust in him. One thing that the enemy hates is when we pray. That is why he makes Christians to be wary. He makes Christians to be discouraged. He makes Christians not to want to pray because he knows when we pray, there is power that is coming forth. When we pray, there are changes that are coming forth. When we pray, there are miracles that are happening. When we pray, there's a transformation that is coming forth. When we pray, God is coming with his glory when we pray. So I'm here to encourage every one of us. Let us continue and pray. Let us continue and pray. And when we pray, miracles will happen. Given this last illustration, there was a time when a terrible accident happened. And this young man, when the accident happened, he went through uh, the windscreen and the car came over him. And I was called in that inc in, 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 in incident. And I could hear clear the, the spirit of the Lord saying to me, because the place was barricaded. There were police, there were a, 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 a traffic officers there. You couldn't go over the place that has been barricaded. And I could hear the spirit of the Lord saying to me, go over the barricade and go and pray for this young boy. I'll raise him to life. You know, it is a cry of my heart even today because I, I, I became so afraid because there were police, there, were, there was everybody there. And I did not pray for that young man. I did not pray for that young man. But the Lord spoke to me, go over the barricade and lay your hand upon that dead body, and I'll raise it to life. And there was so much fear inside me. And there were so many questions. What about you go there and you pray and nothing happens? This is the devil trying to discourage us from praying. And Dr. George and Dr. Nancy, I want to confess, I never, I never went and prayed for that young man. But I believe if I listened to the Lord that day, people that were there, when they see this young man raised back to life, they would have been saved. And I cried to the Lord and I asked the Lord forgiveness for not listening to him. So it is a cry of my life. When we begin to pray, the Lord is going to use us in a very, very special way. We only need to listen to him. And when you listen to him, shine away, remove fear, because prayer and fear are not friends. Fear will stop you, but faith will pull you forward to pray. So in that moment, I did not use faith. Fear came all over me. And that miracle never happened because of fear. So when we pray, we have to have faith. And when we have faith, so many powerful things are going to happen.
So I am thankful for this opportunity that you have given me, Dr. George and Dr. Nancy. And I am thankful to the Lord. And, and, and I, I give glory to the Lord. He is so powerful. He is so awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, pray for us, please, sir. I'm praying, Dr. Nancy. Heavenly Father, in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you have given us this tool called prayer and intercession. This tool, when we can use it, many lives will be saved. Many lives will be transformed. Many lives will come to the knowledge of truth and they will be saved. When, when we pray, O oh Lord, the entire world will be transformed in the name of Jesus. You send people in different continents for different purposes. But when they arrive there and when they pray, you open doors that were closed. You open, you open things where they said, here we don't want salvation. But when somebody comes there and he prays and she prays, you are able to transform. Lord, we have seen you raising people back to life. We have seen you uh, healing uh, uh, sicknesses that are uncurable diseases, you are able to heal those sicknesses because of prayer. Father, I thank you that we trust in you. We call upon you. According to your word, in the book of Isaiah, you said, I wanted to answer. I wanted to do miracles. I wanted to give answers, but nobody prayed. Father, I don't want to be that. I don't want uh, to be that person who did not pray for my nation, uh, who did not pray for my people, uh, who did not pray for my country. Lord, I, do, I don't want to be that person. Uh, I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to be an intercessor. I want to be somebody when I have prayed, uh, things change. Uh, when I have prayed, uh, situation change. Uh, because prayer is the force that you have given us. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I glorify you. And I give you all the praise. What Amen. a moment, Lord, that you have given us. We have been praying to ancestors and we have never seen anything. But Lord, when we came and we prayed to the almighty God, when we pray to the God who created the heavens and the earth, when we pray to the God of Israel, we have seen miracles happen. Now, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And I glorify you. And I give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. That was powerful. 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 You know, Abel, you are a modern day Samuel. Yeah. We read in the Bible that none of his words fell to the ground. And you live your life with such faith and intentional speaking and declarations, interceding and prayers and prophetic words that you are a modern day Samuel. And the Lord's going to open up increasing number of doors across South Africa and the whole African continent. And even here, when you're in America in a few days, because people need that faith impartation. And right now, Father, we just receive this receive. faith impartation yes, from our Lord. brother, Lord, from his heart, from his tears, his trailing tears that he spent days and days and years praying and interceding and travailing on behalf yes, of and your purposes, Lord. And we just thank you for his heart, focused, dedicated, consecrated, sanctified unto you, dear Jesus. Uh, while you were uh, sharing, Abel, I was finishing reading your paper last night and today and 
several times it brought that tears of joy and tears of thanksgiving that we're so blessed to even know you, brother. And, and that's true for each one here and those that couldn't be here today. And I was reading that when you were a newborn baby, your mother died three months after you were born mm -hmm. and your older brother had a dispute with your father and your older brother murdered the father with a knife. So you had to bury both your mom and dad at the same time. And thankfully, the Lord spared you that you were only three months old, but you must have seen so much in your lifetime. Yes. Um, for you to overcome with such faith and yeah. um, uh, and perseverance yeah. and um, uh, just uh, breaking through in so many areas, it's a real inspiration. And I'm honored to know you, brother. Me, so me thank you for your life. Me too. I am too. I just want to thank you, um, uh, Dr. Abel. I just want to thank you. And there, uh, we were talking that there, there was a great impartation today. And it comes not just by words, of course, as people know, but it comes because of your experience that you poured out into us today. And we can feel that really. Um, I just treasure uh, the reading of it, working with it. And I know we're still working on some things with that with the paper, but it is very much worth the read. And we just so appreciate you. I just want to thank you. Sherry, go ahead. You want to, you have a comment. Pastor what? Abel, I, um, I just repeat what Dr. George said. It really is an honor and a blessing to know you. You have been such an encouragement to me. Um, I wrote down some things as you were speaking. You said, when I go to the giants of faith, I look at you as a giant of faith. The things that you have been through, the obstacles you've overcome, the way you are shifting your nation and the region, I know you're a pastor, but I, I heard this phrase. I know that you are a man of great humility, so please receive this in the spirit it's meant. The weight of what you carry. This is a phrase I heard, and I know it was the Lord because it came so quick. Smith Wigglesworth was known as the apostle of faith, but Abel is going to be known as the apostle of prayer. And as you were... Uh, writing down, I was writing down, you are rallying the troops. And then shortly after you said, I am encouraging the soldiers in the army. You carry such a weight and such an impartation like Dr. Nancy and Dr. George said, I truly am blessed by your ministry and the brief amount of time that I've known you. You are an incredible man of faith. And again, I know you're a man of humility, but you are mighty mighty in the spirit. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, Julie, did you have something? Somebody else just jump in. I, I just ditto. I feel so empowered to pray after listening to you. I really do. It just, Sherry said something about your imparting. You really you did more than talk about prayer. You imparted. Um, it's like you imparted the ability to us. In other words, you, your your words just spoke. Like, you can do this. We can pray together, and there can be results. So I, I, it was more of an. I felt more of an impartation, um, than necessarily just collecting information. Um, there was a lot of good information, but I felt like there was more of a spiritual impartation of prayer as you spoke. So I, I, just, I hear what Sherry said and, and really amen. Yes and amen. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jolie. Kuzan, you got something? Just jump on. Unmute, sir, please. Baba Abo, and Nakulumile Katle. Mina bonga kulu, lo kulu kulu na kona la pagawen. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> I don't get much chance to speak Zulu. I mix it with Russian sometimes, but uh, I'm I'm enjoy your 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 uh, talk and just your manner uh, led me long back so much to Africa and and the people of our country and uh, you you inspire us um, to wherever we are to to walk out our call and to pray and and you encourage me to to pray more my wife is more the one that uh, have your your level of prayer life but uh, and it have carried us for many years and uh, yeah. but I thank you for your humility and and power that you you that you you don't just talk out of education you talk out of experience and and that is powerful thank you thank you so much thank you thank you more comments this is great you speak zulu russian i didn't know there was a language called zulu russian <laughs> <laughs> So I like I don't know. <laughs> keep going, guys. Keep commenting. Just jump in. I'm you. Just share. Nice yeah, maybe to 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 share something on on what you said, Doctor George, uh, on 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 my paper. You know, my name is Vusumzi, Vusumzi. and I just want to explain what is the meaning of that. Vusumzi means raising a family. Wow. And, oh. and, and raising a family. Remember, when, when, when my brother murdered my father, the whole family was destroyed. Because both we had to bury both my parents. At the same time, my brother went to jail I was left with my sister uh, that I am coming right after her. We were only two left. So mm -hmm. there was no family at all. We had to be taken to, to an orphanage, you know? And, 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 and this name came forth. It was like, I have to raise this family that the enemy has destroyed. Wow. And, wow. and it, was such, it was such an attack upon my life. That is why I hate the devil with all of my heart. Mm. It was mm. such an attack. Remember, from my mother's side, their daughter has been killed or died because she gave birth to me. Because immediately after she gave birth to me, a couple of months she died. And from my father's side, their son was killed because of me. So I got rejection from both families. Wow. There was no one who said, as a family, I will take him. No, no, no. Nobody wanted me. It was like I'm a snake. That is, And I was taken to an orphanage. Mm. So it... Growing up, it was the survival of the fittest. Mm. And I can tell you now, for me to be where I am is through prayer. It's through prayer. It's through trusting in the Lord. And the Lord has changed things. I always tell my wife, just, just to marry you, it's God's grace. It's God's mm. grace. Just to have those three children that the Lord has given to us blessing, honor, and praise. It's God's grace. It's yeah. God's grace. So prayer changed all things. Amen. Wow. Amen. Keep, keep jumping in. That's awesome. Go ahead, Emily. Not this um, Abel, thank you so much. And I just so much what everyone has said it's just about your humility and it truly is an honor to know you in this class and to uh, be with you sometimes on Tuesdays with with the prayer meetings but this is just so life-giving 
He's, you know, during the times that we are living in, um, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to think, oh my goodness, everything has been shaken, but yet you're, you're reminding us and encouraging us through your life and through your experience that the kingdom of God is real, that you can call on Father God, that he's going to answer your prayer, that he's going to change things. All we need to do is to be willing to do it and to believe that his, his word is faithful. But, um, the verse came to me, um, Second Corinthians 10 to the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud things that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. And that's what I see about you about what you're teaching and what you're importing. You're teaching people not to look at what the natural is, what man says, but to see what God says about the situation and to agree with it and to press in and to not be denied. And that's what I like about, about it. It's, it's your passion, your passion for it. And it is an impartation. And, you know, I, I, I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful that um, I had a chance to hear it and, and to know you and can't wait to hear about the other good things that, the other doors, like Dr. George said, that are going to be opening for you. And I really think there are going to be some doors opening for you here in America. My goodness, we need it. <laughs> thank you so much. You know, the, fa the fatherhood um, on you, too. Thank you so much, Emily. The fatherhood on you. Um, you know, when you don't have a family, to be able to step up and be a father. And um, certainly... You've been doing that with some other of our friends around the world, and we just appreciate that, that you have stepped into that that loving fatherhood role, though you haven't really, uh, you may have gotten to experience it by other people, but you become that to, to many. And so um, I thank God for that for you, uh, Dr. Abel. I'm going to call you Dr. You. Abel. I just thank God for that because you're, you're, you, you, what you didn't have, you became with Christ, and it's such an encouragement. Um, to see that that we can overcome all things and that um, yes, there's trauma and there's things that we go through and yes, we have to overcome them. It's not something that's dismissive. It's something that you spent your life doing and it's um and and it's just the anointing is so strong because of what you've done. And I just want to thank you for not giving up and not quitting. And then not only that, going on, and, and as your paper was talking about, going into the next generation, wanting to develop it into the next generation. And the Lord said, yeah, start the bicycle club, which, you know, I mean, to me, that among so many other things. So I just want to thank you for not quitting when it would have been easier to quit. And just thank you. I just appreciate it because I'm so truly blessed myself. Anyway, I want to shout out. Keep going, guys. Other comments? I think Karen has something. Oh, Karen, go for it. Reverend Dr. Abel. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And you are an anointed preacher, my brother. And it was a blessing to, I, I just felt like I was listening to you preach the word and that was really good. And I was blessed. And, um, you know, I don't, I, when I say I enjoyed it, I did. I enjoyed it. I, I, it's not like I'm entertained. I'm I'm receiving. I'm listening, and I see the Lord on you with it. And um, good preaching will refresh. Sometimes it will convict. Um, it will impart. There's so many things that come through, and and I really see that you carry a very powerful preaching anointing. If you haven't preached this message to your church, I encourage you to do it <laughs> because it's really a powerful message. We we need reminder of the power of prayer. I don't know if you heard about it, but we just came through 21 days of, of a fast and pray for Israel. I don't know if you guys participated in that. We saw the power of God move. Just amazing the things that were coming out of that um, during some of those prayer meetings, we were so blessed. And in the end, um, we had heard that on uh, Pentecost Sunday, that they mm -hmm. thought about 100,000 people through all the churches being represented and stuff would be praying for Israel. And um, our prayer leader at Morning Star, he, he got up and he said he thinks it's as high as 5 
hundred million people. I, I said that wrong. They thought a hundred million people would be praying. They think it could have been as high as five hundred million people praying for Israel. Prayer turns the head of God. You know, when yes. when you I heard a pastor many, many years ago say that the part in the body that the intercessor is is the neck. He says the neck turns the head. And when the intercessor comes in and prays, it turns the head of God to look at something. And I really felt like today, as you preach to us your, your dissertation, I, I really felt like you were turning us and calling us to turn the head of our father, to remember, to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And the testimonies were so encouraging. I was I was greatly blessed by this. I see you walking in um, multiple anointings. I, I see the preacher pastor anointing is, is very big. I feel that that I, I believe that's going to continue. And I see expansion. I believe the Lord is saying, stretch out your 10 pay tables, stretch them out, stretch them out, stretch them out, stretch them out. He's talking to hearts and he's talking to minds and he's saying it's time to build bigger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't very often, in fact, I don't know if I've ever told a, a pastor to build a bigger church, but I, I believe that it's, that's there. That's the timing. This is God. He's saying, build bigger. He's called you. He's anointed you. He's working through you. He's made you Reverend Dr. Abel for a reason. He's opening doors. He's opening opportunities, but he's drawing them in. He's, it's Christ in you that is drawing them in, that is bringing them in, that is blessing them. And I want to say, I think your wife is listening to this. And I want to say that she is a mighty woman of God and, and, and God shines through her and the church I haven't even met her face for face, but I just know it in my spirit that the church is blessed by her. They love her. And I want to encourage her to rise up and even more because God has purposed much, 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 much more for you too as a couple as you minister and reach out to the people. I see more and more transformation in your nation. We were praying about the the power situation in, in your nation. And you know, in the natural, I'm praying for, for more electricity to be generated. But I believe God is saying in the supernatural, get ready, cause here I come. Get ready, cause here I come. Whoa, here I come, South Africa. Here I come, Abel, whoa. Get ready, get ready. He's moving, he's moving with power and might. He will birth his children in South Africa and you will be amazed and blessed that you get to be such a part of it. Thank you, Father. Bless him, I pray. Bless him, I pray. Bring it to pass, Father. Everything that you've written in your books for Abel, for his wife, for his children, for his ministry, bring it to pass, Father. Help them to walk in everything, that not one thing be left out. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Anybody else have anything? Abel, you know, um, I think Emily and Nancy were talking about the father in you, you know, with coming basically from no family for you to have such a father's heart shows and proves and testifies of father God's love through his son, Jesus, to be able to reach in you and to put his very heart inside of you to not allow a bitterness or root or hatred or any division like that when yes. the family to come through. And now so many of your family members uh, receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that that's, that's like a, a, a huge miracle, multiple miracles that has occurred in your life. And, and I love how you, you say every word, but you talk about it. It's only by God's grace. It's really true. I pray we all get a deeper revelation of how how pivotal his grace is and that it's only by his grace that we're here today oh so thank you brother april dr april thank you dr jack so so anybody else have any other comments this has been really wonderful dr april, we have a few things left to work on with your computer with, with your so we'll we'll get with you on that too. But go ahead, Emily. 
I was just going to say the verse keeps coming to me, the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violence take it by force. And I feel like that's you that, you know, you're going to have everything that the Lord has, has provided for us through his death and his resurrection and that, that you're there and, and you're taking it um, for, for the kingdom. So it's exciting. It's just encourage or encouraging because you just pro pro propel us forward to follow you encourage us to follow yeah thank you we're, we're going to want to end in some prayer here too and um we have a couple requests actually since we're, we're on this but um uh for those of you who are coming to graduation on friday afternoon around two ish i think uh Abel, you get here around 1 30 maybe on the second on friday but um we're going to have a little practice around 2, 2.30 at the ballroom. We'd love for you to come. If you guys are just coming to help, we'd still love to see you at that time because we'll, we'll need help with set up too. So we'd love to see you guys there. And it's going to be a really wonderful time. If not, if you can't come, please join us online so we can we can be together and celebrate our uh, brothers and sisters who are going to be walking. We'd love to have you. Um, so uh, you know what? We're talking about uh, prayer and uh, you know, it, well, you had prayed for um, you had prayed for Kojo to come. So we want to continue to pray for him. He's had some uh, uh, he's had provision made, but um, that you know, in Ghana, I know this is not that time, but since you prayed, I wanted to tell you today. Um, in Ghana, it um, there's a lot of fraud when people sign up for um, for uh, visa. visa interviews, and so they're backed up a year. So he's waiting for somebody to drop off the list. And we have another person, Lois, too, waiting from Thailand to, to drop off the list so they can get in. They're, they're going to come the last minute, and this is the last minute. <laughs> and it would be impossible unless God. So anyway, we are praying for that. Um, and then also you wanted to pray for Edgar. Yeah, Edgar uh, Persad, a dear friend of ours. Um, I talked to his wife, Indira, yesterday, and she said she's now telling Edgar, you're fine get up and go it's over it's behind you god has uh, made you new uh, by his grace and so get up and so pray for edgar and let's also pray for rick. our dear brother rick joiner yeah. uh, who had a stroke friday night and and we hear he's doing well that his mind is is sharp he has some uh, troubles on his left side but we're praying for total restoration in every area and that he'll bounce back and He'll be Rick 2.0 better yeah. than ever before, very soon. So, Abel, pray for uh, Kojo to come, uh, Edgar Prasad's uh, health and healing restoration, and Rick Joyner as well. And then let's all let's all uh, stretch out our hands for um, uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Doctor Abel safe journey here as well. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Abel. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Out. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the most wonderful and most powerful name of Jesus, pray, Lord, for Kojo, wonder-waking God. You are a miracle-waking God. You are faithful and you are powerful. And, Lord, there is none like you. Revelation 3, verse 80 says, when you have opened a door, who can close? Father, I pray for an open door for Kojo in Nigeria that he will come through. In Ghana, that he will come through. Father, I pray even for the, in, in, in Thailand, Lord, for the situation there. Father, that you will come through. Heavenly Father, I pray for Rick Joyner. Heavenly Father, as we hear that he is recovering well. Father God, I pray that you are a miraculous working God. You are the God who heals and there will be no signs of stroke upon Rick Joyner in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will restore him, Lord, uh, to, to, to his perfect perfection, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you that you have opened the door and Lord, and I thank you that the door that you have opened up, no one can close. Heavenly Father, thank you 
that you are a faithful God, that you are a wonder waking God. Luanda waking God, I pray even for the flight as we we'll flying from Heathrow, my God, to Shalot. Lord, I pray that your grace, Lord, your grace, when we land in Shalot, we will say, yes, it is God's grace. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray even for the graduation ceremony, Lord, that everything will go according to the plan. In the name of Jesus, wonder waking God, I pray that, Lord, you will speak in such an audible way that will hear you speaking to us on the graduation ceremony, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, that you are so powerful and so wonderful. Father God, I pray right now for CMM, Lord, the, the entire team of CMM, Dr. George and Dr. Uh, um, Nancy, and the entire team, Lord, uh, that there's no one who's going to be sick in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you, you'll cover them with your fire in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, everything will go according to the plan, uh, because your word says many are the plans of men, uh, but you are the one who, who approves them and, and let them go through. Father, I pray all the plans uh, that they have, Lord, uh, as CMM, as, as for the graduation, we bring all those plans to you, Holy Spirit, that will prosper them, uh, that, Lord, will make everything to go according to the plan in the name of Jesus. You are a faithful God. Father, I pray that things will happen your way, not our way, Lord, but your way. In the name of Jesus, we are sick and tired, Lord, of doing things our way. But Lord, we say, and all those things that we have done our way, they have failed. But Lord, when we give them to you, Holy Spirit, they all succeed. They all proceed. They all get blessed. Father, I release your anointing right now and your power to be uh, 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 upon each and every organizer, each and every one who is the planning and the, and, the, and the organizing of this uh, um, graduation. Lord, we give all those plans to you and want to say, Lord, after everything has been done, we will say to the glory be to you. All the glory and honor be unto you, my Father. In the most wonderful and most powerful name of Jesus, I thank you, my Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Dr. Abel. Thank you, Dr. Abel. And thank you, Father, for this year. We're just going to start yes. closing this year out. Yes. I'm cry. Lord, thank you so thank much you, for Lord. this year. God, we thank you for your fire, Father, yes. that was released, yes. God. Thank you, Father, that this yes. fire be released into every person yes. that's on this floor. Yes, Lord. Whoa! The fire of God, fire of God, stir up in them, Lord, yes, even Lord. what you have for calling their yes. destiny. Oh, to finish strong. Yes. All the things that you have for them, that those doors yes. are open for them too, for their ministry, Father, for their love, for their yes. families. Hey, yes, to finish yes, strong. Lord. The great harvest, God. Whoa, yes, Father, I thank you. God, the fire, fire, Father, just burning them. Thank God, you, the fire Lord. burns in, in the bones, even though, Father, that it would continue to burn and light up the world, God, wherever they are. For yes. your glory, God, that you would be glorified in all these things. And Father, mm -hmm. I just thank you so much for each person, yes, too. Yes, just yes, bless yes, each yes, one, God. Yes, Wrap yes, your yes, arms yes, around them, Father. Yes, Let yes, them know yes, your yes, great yes, love. Yes, yes, throughout this summer, God, and continue to encourage, right. enlarge, and bless their yes. families as well, God, until we see them again next year. Yes. Thank, you. Thank yes. you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name. Whoa. Whoa. Do you have anything else? My Jesus. Whoa. Safe travels. Coming to graduation or wherever you're going Jesus. this Thank summer. And bless you all. Thank and you. we'll meet again soon. In Jesus' name. Thank you all. Thank you, love guys. You all. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Abel. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Love you. God bless you.